thank you thank you thank you listen listen the main act is still to follow yeah you know i i was i was standing out there and i'm listening to the intro and i'm thinking you know when you got the big rock stars the big rock show comes on they send the other guys out to do the early acts and then the main band comes out afterwards i'm a little like that today so the main the main band is the main band is somebody else but it it's wonderful first of all what is an undergrad college in delhi doing with something as fabulous as this i i thought under i thought undergrad colleges were meant to be little classrooms you know look at this sorry post oh your post grad you see there post grad as well but this is wonderful and i'm i'm delighted that so many of you have come to listen to well for want of a better word a tech star and one of the things i'm going to be asking him and maybe i should ask you first actually because yours is actually currently the only generation that matters in india others don't matter we talk you matter so no that's true i'm not trying to i'm not trying to play to the gallery don't worry because your generation doesn't believe doesn't can see through it right away right so who are the, who are the latest rock stars man are the latest rock stars the movies or the cricketers or the te or the technology stars CEOs are the big rock stars gee man we're all in the wrong business okay since since you're all the rock stars let let let, let me call him he's 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 sort of simple like like you and me when went to college like like all of us maybe dreamt like all of us and then just went and did something there yeah, which i'm sure some of you are going to do as well so since the verdict has come out loud and clear let's call sundar pichai and i'm just since all of you are taking pictures let me get out of them for a while come on take them all take all you want i told you i i was asking him this just before i came out and i was asking him the question i was asking all you guys and he said i don't know but i did ask them i said who's who, who are the latest rock stars is it is it the music is it the music groups is it the movie stars is it the cricketers they said the ceos uh. <laughs> so what's it telling you about the india you're reaching out to harsha was one when i was growing up Uh, nonsense <laughs> see see I told you he knows how to say the right things <laughs> no but is is isn't it interesting that a tech star and for all that you might say about being a good simple south indian unassuming you are one <laughs> what does it say about india that a tech star gets this kind of reception you know um can everyone hear <laughs> yeah okay okay Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. Great. Uh, you know, a few years ago, I'd, I'd, I'd come to India, and I was, uh, you know, this was in Mumbai, and I was getting off the car, uh, trying to go in for a meeting, and there was a person who came, opened the door of the car, and I was walking in, and uh, you know, he said, "I listened to your uh, Google I/O speech, and it was phenomenal," and uh, which is our developer conference. and you know it struck me well wow, there's no other country in the world where the person who came and you know helped me uh, get out and go into the hotel had watched a uh, 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 you know a technical speech like that so i do think there's something unique about india that way uh, you know i think people are uh, interested in technology which i think is great uh, you know i couldn't ask for anything better so thank you for that interest wonderful <laughs> but sundar you were uh... you are a young man too you still are even if you're much younger than i am but you still are and a lot of people in this room are are dreaming about tomorrow it's it, it's a beautiful part of india that's in this room and they're all dreaming about tomorrow and it'll be interesting to ask what did you dream about when 
when there was time to dream about tomorrow for you? Were you uh, just sitting waiting to take on the world? Or? Uh, there was a uh, you know, couple of things. I did, uh, not, not for fun, but you know, I, I did dream of just like I'm sure like many, many uh, Indians uh, dreamt of being a cricketer. You know, I used to be a huge... You did? Yeah, I used to. <laughs> I used to be a huge fan of, uh, sorry, I'm old, but I used to be a huge fan of uh, Gavaskar, uh, you know, when he was playing. <laughs> and, uh, and later on, Sachin, when he played, but, uh, you know, so I always, uh, you know, had a dream. On a, on a more serious note, you know, I, I always loved technology uh, growing up, uh, and, uh, you know, so I had dreams of uh, just not exactly what I would do, but I wanted to, uh, you know, at that time, you know, I used to read about what was happening in Silicon Valley, and you know, I wanted to go be a part of it. Uh, so I didn't exactly dream a career as much as a destination and so wanting to be sitting in IIT Kharagpur, mm -hmm. there was no Google then. No. Okay. <laughs> You're sitting in IIT Kharagpur in a room that wasn't quite as fancy as this hall is, and there is no Google. So how are you keeping in touch with what Silicon Valley is doing? And how are you dreaming? And wow, I have to, I have to think about that for a minute. Uh, there was no internet, too. And uh, you know, it was pre all that. Uh, you know, mostly reading. And uh, you know, my uncle had gone to the States. And, uh, you know, so, and you know, I was interested uh, in, in semiconductors and so on. And uh, William Shockley, uh, the person who and I invented semiconductors, uh, you know, was from Silicon Valley. So I'd read a story about him staying, uh, you know, working through uh, at Stanford close to Christmas Eve, uh, and so stuff like that. So, you know, for, for what I was interested in, I knew that that's, ha that's where it was happening. But now, there's a, gen there's a new generation that coming, that's coming in. I, I feel the generation gap every few minutes. Yeah. But Google and you both have to stay relevant not just to the people in this room, but to a generation earlier than them. So how do you stay relevant? How does Google always stay relevant? You know, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, in the technology world, you know, everything changes in, uh, in, you know, in such a fast pace. Uh, you know, given you were asking questions about uh, when I went to school, in the 80s, uh, you know, the personal computers were just getting underway. And, uh, you know, and, you know, 10 years from then, um, you know, I just gone to the U.S. and the Internet, as we know, came into existence. And 10 years after that, you know, mid-2000s, when the first smartphones came into being, right? Android didn't even exist 10 years ago. And uh, so, but kind of shows you how much things change. And so a lot of what we do is to figure out what that next wave is. And you have to, you have to do that. You have to reinvent yourself. Uh, you know, part of the reason we are all very interested in India is, you know, it's an amazingly young country. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a vast country. And so in many ways we do think the trends of the future will come from places like that, you know, so largely explains our deep interest in places like India. Just to tell you how much India has changed, there's a young man there who's taking a selfie of you from a dist from as far as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just hoping that you're somewhere in the picture somewhere. <laughs> One, one of the things I read about you, it said Sundar Pichai is an ex Sundar Rajan, right? To give you the whole name. So it actually was Sundara Rajan. No one yes. could pronounce it, yeah. No, we can. <laughs> this Sundar Rajan. Yeah. Yeah, good. I, I grew up in Hyderabad, Telugu boy, so whatever. Marathi boy, <laughs> Telugu boy. But they said he's an example of the fact that good guys can finish first. Now, on this one, the teachers are clapping more than the students. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't exactly a good guy at school, though. Well, a good guy doesn't necessarily have to mean 98%. Just a good guy is a decent person. That's what I've been told about you. Don't believe everything you So, are you... <laughs> and that brought more cheers. <laughs> So you're not the Rahul Dravid of the tech industry. Uh. I, you know, no. I don't know no, everything I, about Rahul. No, I'll but tell you. I, I knew he had good technique. Uh, that's that. That's all yeah. I know about him. You no, know, I'll tell you. A, a lot of us with the simple middle class background, and I can relate entirely to what Sundar is saying. We find it very difficult to talk about ourselves. So maybe that maybe that question was 
was a little wrong. Is, is Google a fun place, or is it a place for workaholics? Oh, no, no, it's, I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a lot more balanced than people realize. Uh, you know, it's an amazingly fun place. Uh, you know, I think it is, you know, I did feel like when I first went to Google, I was like a kid in a candy store, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, there, there is, you walk around, people are working on amazing things, and, uh, you know, and so really stretches your mind. Is one of the things we talk about in sport is that sometimes it's easier to get to number one than stay number one, and Google has done an amazing job of staying number one. Mm -hmm. how, how do you handle that challenge? Because when you are number one, everyone wants to be you. So how do you, how do you take on the challenge of staying number one? You know, f f from our perspective, and I think it's true for uh, in technology in particular, you know, the world keeps changing, as I said earlier. So, uh, you know, a big part of what I focus on at any given time is you know, making sure we are innovating and building products for the future. You know, it's just got to be a normal course of how you think. Um, and so, you know, we are constantly thinking about what to do next. So, you know, Android is very popular. People are using smartphones. But, you know, I always sit and think about what is the next version of how people use computing, right? And so we are thinking about, you know, things like virtual reality or augmented reality. So these are all new areas, but we are constantly thinking about it. And so you have to do that. Uh, on a constant basis uh, to push forward. Because Google's a great example. The, the tech world is littered with shooting stars that, that came up, that shot, that lit up the world, and literally like meteors went away. Google has, has been phenomenally successful in bucking that train. Yeah, and I, you know, and I, I think, I think we, we've always had a very ambitious mission. Uh, you know, we wanted to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible. I think in the context of smartphones and how people use it around, if anything, that mission is even more relevant. There's a lot more information uh, which people consume, so we want to do a better job of that. And we feel like we are in early days of that mission, you know, with things like uh, what we call as machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, we'll be able to do, do much better with all of these things. And, uh, and, you know, so for us, the journey is just getting started. One of the reasons everyone here, I suspect, is excited to meet you is you are what they would like to be. And an Indian who studied here, went overseas, and did what everyone would dream of doing. Is it mandatory even today, you think, for people in this room, for an Indian to go west to become a tech star? Uh, I, I hope not. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know I, think, I think one of the things which is uh, exciting, I'm excited to be speaking here, is uh, you know, I do think there are many, many different paths you take. Um, and I think especially in, uh, I was telling uh, someone on the way over here, last week someone on Twitter uh, tweeted to me and said, thank you on behalf of Indian, uh, you know, this was uh, uh, Indian American, but he tweeted to me and said, thank you on behalf of all Indian Americans for not being a doctor. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, um, and uh, uh, showing other paths exist. And I hope it's the same, uh, you know, being in the U.S., you know, I find people take uh, a remarkably varied number of paths. And, uh, you know, so I, th I do think it's important to follow your dream and uh, do something which you're, uh, you know, excited by. Uh, you know, so I think if you follow your heart and do what you like, you will always do much better. Uh, and so I don't think it matters that you're an engineer or uh, you're, a, you know, you're in science or it could be in any field. And I think, uh, you know, I think you're a good example of, you know, having gone to IAM and uh, switching and being, uh, you know, at that time, you know, I distinctly was impressed by the fact that uh, you were bold enough to do something like that. But I think it's phenomenal. You did something which, uh, you know, you followed your heart. And I think, I think those are you know, examples. It's one of those moments when the head of Google says he knows you. It's <laughs> It's like, it's, it's like a friend of mine, friend of mine plays for Australia, Matthew Hayden, we became friends. And he, when Usain Bolt won the 100 meters, he was asked about his love for cricket, and he said, my favorite's Matthew Hayden. And his children said, but you are our coach. Why does he know you? <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> yeah, because increasingly it's becoming easier to do what you want mm -hmm. in, in this country because you don't have to go through standard infrastructures and clearances. What Google has done is it's almost given flight to a lot of young dreams. Yeah. And, and that, that surely must please you enormously that, that Google is now seen as this, as this pathway almost. Uh, it's, uh, you know, exciting for me to see. I mean, one thing I would add is it's not just doing, you know, you know another thing I've noticed over time is, you know, you, you will have many, many, many opportunities to, opportunities to reinvent yourself. And so, uh, you know, so I think, 
you know, it's worthwhile taking risks and trying to do something you're really, uh, you know, excited by. And if the first attempt you don't do it, you know, you can try again and, you know, things tend to work out in the long run. You know, since you brought it up, it, it, it wasn't in the set of questions I'd, I'd worked on, but the attitude to failure in this generation is very different from mine. Mm -hmm. In my generation, to fail was to commit a crime. Mm -hmm. And yet what you're talking about is go do what you want and there's always come back, aren't there? That's right, yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that's how, you know, in Silicon Valley, you know, uh, you know part of the reason so many people st start up a company is, you know, starting up a company and even having failed, you know, you can wear it like a badge of honor, right? And, uh, and I think that's important, you know, culturally, you know, uh, risk is rewarded. I remember when I started working at Google, you know, I, if, if I went and, you know, people were discussing ideas, the other people who heard the ideas try to build on those ideas. They encourage you. So it's a culture of optimism. It's a culture of risk taking. And I think that's really important. So, Okay, just a couple before we start taking uh, questions from everybody. You talked about cricket, but you tweet about Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm a huge, uh, you know, uh, football fan as well. Uh, and, uh, you know... <laughs> I remember when I was young, you know, waking up and driving my mom crazy because I would wake up in the middle of the night to watch World Cup soccer at that time and to watch the Brazilian team in those days, uh, in the 80s. And, uh, you know, I continue to, uh, you know, cricket and soccer are two sports I follow. I follow actually football more now because it's easier to follow there. Uh, and I'm a very big Barcelona and a Messi fan. All you guys who wanted to talk about Cristiano Ronaldo, don't. <laughs> I don't know whether you saw the recent El Clasico in which uh, Barcelona won 4-0. Uh, if there are any Real Madrid fans, they just have to keep quiet, right? You can't, you can't, can't do anything. So, Test cricket or T20, Sundar? Uh, you know, because he grew up in Madras, not in Chennai. Yeah, there you go. And Madras is as test cricket as you can get. I, I was telling Harsha just before we walked in, you know, I was fortunate enough to go and see the, uh, most of you may not remember, but in the 80s, in 1986, uh, we had a, a, the, it was a second tight test, I think, uh, between India and Australia. And I was in the stadium then, and somebody had given me tickets because they thought the match was going to be a draw. Uh, but, you know, I always thought Test Cricket was amazing. I had the time to watch it then, too. Uh, but, uh, you know, I followed the transition to one days very, very well. Uh, you know, T20s, I catch it, but it was something I didn't grow up with. So, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't enjoy it as much as I do one day or Test Cricket, but, I, you know, it's exciting. Okay, since, since you're here, somebody, I, I'm reproducing a line somebody told me. They said, in the Google era, Test Cricket is threatened. In the Google in era? In the Google era. Where huh. everything is at, the, at, at your fingertips, everything is moving so yeah. fast, yeah. But, you know, some things stand the test of time, so yes, hopefully... They do. they do. I'm a big test cricket fan anyway. Yeah. Okay, one last question before I, I throw open the questions for you. What next for, for Google? And I know I'm going to come back at the end to ask you that question separately too. But there's glass, there's cardboard, there's cars. Can, can Google make 150 kilometers an hour bowlers? <laughs> If we could do that, I would just, uh, you know, secretly use it to just make myself the b uh, fastest bowler in the world. Uh, uh, you know, I think uh, there are many things we are working on. Uh, you know, things which I'm excited by are, uh, you know, most of what we do today uh, in computer science is, uh, you know, by, by engineers coding, and, you know, these are hand-coded systems. Over time, what we call as machine learning or you know, an extension of that artificial intelligence, you know, we'll, we'll be able to, in a learned way, uh, build systems which automatically learn and do things. And that is, we already do it today. So for example, when you talk about self-driving cars, the way the cars recognize that it's a stop sign or a pedestrian, these are machine learning. These are what we call as deep neural nets and they automatically learn, uh, learn what they are doing. So these are incredibly powerful things to come in the future. And so I think we are badly scratching the surface. And things like that will apply to healthcare, many, many fields. And so, you know, there's a lot, lot left to do. One day, the self-driving cars will learn how to drive in Delhi. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that one is pretty hard, yeah. <laughs> okay, excellent. We've got, we've got questions uh, from you, and it's incredible how many of you wrote in and, and asked questions. See, he's wearing a Google shirt as well. Okay. Uh, okay, the question comes from Chandra Nair. 
Chandra, uh, there you are from uh, Kulachi Hansraj Model School. Have I got the pronunciation right? Mm, yes, sir. Excellent. Chandra, your question. Uh, my question is, what would you have been if not the CEO of Google? Ah. Uh. Wow, uh, you know, I, I would have taken, I'm not that picky, football or cricket, I would have been okay with either. Uh, you, know, um, I, you know, I always, I, I think I would have uh, still been building software products, you know, that's what I uh, love to do and, uh, you know, I always was fascinated by the fact that, you know, with software, if you had an idea in your head, uh, you could make it happen and you could see, see the outcome of what you, what you did. And, uh, you know, I love building products at the end of the day and, uh, you know, it's what I would have liked to do. It's, it's the old thing, isn't it, when... <clears throat> remember my father telling me when we were growing up, become whatever you want, but just try and become the best at it. So if you want to build products, just try and become the best at it, <laughs> don't you? Okay, I think we're going left to uh, Soumya Joshi from uh, SRCC. Hi, uh, I'm Soumya. Uh, hi, Sundar. Hi, Harsha. So my question for Sundar is... I'm right here. Ah, there you are, yeah. yes. Uh, so my question for you is, what motivated you to switch fields from first metallurgy to management to computer science? And did you ever feel incompetent or even a bit insecure while working with people who were given more uh, qualified in that field than you were? Um, you know, my, my background, you know, so I, I was always interested in technology and, you know, the first chance I could get to program, I learned programming and, uh, you know, so for me, I never thought of it as switching fields as much as, uh, when the internet started happening, uh, you, know, f you know, it took me a while to realize the power of it and, you know, uh, you know it, it became obvious to me for the first time we are going to have something which could, you know, connect one day all of humanity and would profoundly transform what people did. So I wanted to be a part of that, so, you know, part of the journey, so that's how I thought of it and so I didn't think of it as necessarily switching careers. Um, to answer your second question, you know, absolutely, I, you know, I would actually encourage all of you you know, if at some point in your life, you know, you have to work with people where you feel a bit insecure, right? That's essential because that means you're working with people who are better than you and who are pushing you, right? And uh, so I always encourage if you, if you actually feel very secure in what you do, uh, you know, that means you're doing something comfortable and you're not pushing yourself. And so uh, there are many, many times I've felt uh, working with people in a group, am I doing enough? Are these people seem much better than me. And I think, I think that's an inherent part of learning. Chief, there's, there's one thing you want to take away from this hour you're getting with Sundar, may it be that. <laughs> Let yourself be insecure from time to time. It's, it's a lovely thing. The moment you start to get secure, and I can tell you we all, because we've seen a little bit more life, the moment you get secure, you're actually moving backwards. Okay, we've got a video question, and it's coming from, from, from IIT Kharagpur. So can we get the video question, please? Hello, Mr. Pichai. Greetings from IIT Kharagpur. My name is Hardik Adyarbal. My question is, uh, recently startups from IIT is having on the rise and they are set to transform India into the Silicon Valley of the East. So from your point of view, how much impact do these startups really have on India's progress and how do you think this impact will change the face of the nation in the coming years? Uh, I'm not sure I got the last part. But how will this change the pace of the nation in the coming years? Uh, you know, Every, you know, every year or two years, you know, whenever I make these trips uh, back here, you know, I've always been waiting for this change in India. It was only when I came last year, you know, I felt it very uh, viscerally that, like, you know, the, you know, the, the startup culture had really taken hold here. Uh, it's incredible to see, you know, for the scale of India over time, you do need entrepreneurs to tackle and build things for India and for, for, for globally. And, uh, you know, I think it's a unique opportunity uh, India has. And, you know, all the elements uh, which you need is already here, uh, you know. And so I think India is very, very well positioned to do. The entrepreneurs I meet, uh, you know, we had, as part of me being here, uh, along with uh, Rajan, who heads uh, Google India, you know, we, we hosted a set of entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, I, I spent a bunch of time talking to them. You know, when I see entrepreneurs here, uh, they seem no different to me uh, than uh, the kind of people I meet in the Valley. So intrinsically, I think uh, India can do the same kinds of things. And as the internet becomes more mainstream, people feel more confident, you have a much larger domestic market to tackle, you know, that'll give you the confidence to tackle not just a, a local market, but global problems as well. So I think we are very well positioned.
Would it be fair to say that the number of entrepreneurs in a system is, is almost a measure of the confidence of a generation? Yeah, you know, I mean, the one good thing about India is I think, you know, um, there's always been, you know, whenever in India I used to walk around and go to some remote corner and find a tea stall, you know, and, uh, you know, I always felt uh, that there is an entrepreneur there somewhere uh, who saw that opportunity. So I think that streak has always existed. Uh, but I, I do think this generation, to your earlier point, I think is less, uh, you know, uh, afraid to take risks and follow a conformist path, which is good. Excellent. I hope this realized somewhere that the generation before allowed them to do that, but uh -huh. that's okay. Okay. Let's go to Shrey, Shrey Goswami. Shrey, there you are. From yeah. Pur Purnima hi, University, are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Sundar. And hi, Harsha. Yeah, I just want to ask that there are a large number of developers who are students and developing quality apps. And they have startups as well. So how Google is planning to help them or support them apart from D GBG or GDG groups? Uh, you know, developers are, uh, I think, the bloodline of software, right? I mean, like, the more developers you have, you'll have more ideas and problems getting solved. Uh, India is, you know, uniquely positioned. There's tremendous interest in software development compared to most countries in the world. Uh, one of the things which we announced, uh, you know, as part of uh, uh, me coming here, is we have a new program underway to, uh, we are investing now, the, we, we plan to do this over the next three years, to train uh, two million new Android developers. And we are doing that in partnership with 30 universities. And uh, so I'm incredibly excited by that. And uh, you know, uh, because for, for me, getting that many developers out there in the workforce, uh, you know, some of them will be entrepreneurs and will go on to solve many new things. You know, a, a lot of these people are from Delhi, maybe they're from around here, but I think you'll find that the real, real fever yeah. will actually come from outside the metros. I mean, I'm not saying these people are, don't have the fever, but it's, it's fantastic to see how India has grown into the smaller towns. And it's grown largely because people like Google have made information available to them. Yeah. So Google has almost democratized society That's to that extent. Exciting here. Okay, we've now got, oh, we've got a teacher. This way. Malini Narayanan. Uh, from Army Public School, Shankar Vihar. Yeah. All right. Morning. Sorry, right. I'll turn back this way. Ah, there you are, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a special moment to interact with you. Must also tell you that we have over 200, 300 school students here, and I head the Army Public School. I'm the principal. Um, my question to you is, the Indian education system has done extremely well. We have you in Google, and that is the proof of the pudding. We want to know, how do we now adapt ourselves to become future ready? And what are the skills and the techniques that the children now need to learn so that they have an edge over the other competitors? There are plenty of nations fielding people. So how do we get the edge over the other nations of the world? Thank you. For me, I think uh, a way, you know, as you said, in, in India has a, a you know, strong educational system and there's a culture of valuing education, uh, which, is, which is phenomenal. I think ways in which we could, we could you know, move forward would be for me, uh, you know, if I look at what is needed to solve the next generation of problems, creativity is an important attribute. Uh, I think so encouraging more creativity through the educational system. Today, I do think our educational system values, you know, rigorous academic knowledge over uh, necessarily, uh, you know, being more creative in how you approach education. I think that's important. Uh, another thing I would say is, and I think it, you know, I've seen it in the best schools in the U.S., etc. It's what I call it's very experiential, very hands-on. You know, people learn learn how to do things by doing them, and not just by learning about them, right? And I think that's a big, big difference. So, uh, you know, to me. So allowing a system in which there is a lot more creativity, learning how to get things done by hand, and you know, so much more of a project-based experiential learning are all, I think, you know, trends which the Indian educational system needs to adopt. And, and I also think it's important to teach students to take risks and, uh, you know, and make, making sure the system doesn't penalize for you to take risks and you know, if you're different. And so you know, those are all attributes which I think are important. You have no idea how popular you just became with her students. 
No, but, it, but it's interesting because a lot of the time in the Indian education system, as I was getting my son to study for his exams, and he said they're only testing me on what someone else has already answered. They're not allowing me to learn for myself. And what Google has done now is Google gives all the answers to the questions that are going to come in the exam. So how do people study? And it's a very valid question that she asked. How do we study now? So the education system has now got to adapt to the fact that Google is giving you all the answers anyway. Maybe that's one of the reasons why we are very good at re-engineering, but not as good as inventing. So, okay, there you are. Thank you, thank you, Mani. Thank you very much. Okay, we've got uh, we've got another video question coming for us. Here's an interesting one. Can we can we play the video, please? Hi, Sundar. Why do we still not have Indian deserts as Android OS names? Like N for Nankatai, N for Neappam, or maybe P for Peda. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, when I meet my mom, I'll ask her for suggestions. And, uh, you know, but... Maybe what I'll do next time is when we, when we are working on uh, the next release of Android, Android N, maybe we'll do an online poll on what the name should be and if all Indians vote. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I think we can make it happen. Let me tell you one thing about Indians online. The only community that ever wins online polls are Indians. <laughs> because we just have such numbers. No, which is why I'm suggesting it. I suspect your mother might say when you get to P that P for piesum will be good. Uh, though, you know, though when I was young, you know, I, I never liked sweets. Uh, now I do. Uh, you know, I used to take the piesum and actually add sambar to it so that it didn't taste that sweet. <laughs> Any of you did that? S is long way away. We won't wait for S for sambar. So. <laughs> okay, we've... There's a, there's a lot of people who've, who've also used social media to, uh, to, se to send in questions as well. So let's get the first one that, that's coming off the screen. And it's coming from, uh, from Rishikesh More, or using the hashtag Ask Sundar. Is there any possibility that, uh, that companies in the IT, computer, internet sector, as big or as successful as Google, can be created in India? And the world comes to India for service. You'll see this theme coming through. There's a great pr latent pride among a lot of people. So this will keep coming through. If yes or no, what, what do you think is holding us back? You know, if I can answer this question with a, with a slightly longer term view, I think absolutely, you know, there is nothing intrinsic I see why uh, from India, you know, we cannot do what, uh, what you know, people have achieved uh, externally. So there's nothing uh, intrinsically. You know, there are probably a set of structural reasons why it hasn't fully happened yet. But, you know, those barriers are slowly going away, right? And a big part of it is, uh, you, know, uh, you know, to the earlier question, a culture of startups and risk-taking. And I think, you know, India has historically had a much more of a professional culture and a culture of uh, entrepreneurial approach. You know, that's, it's, it's been very, very exciting to see. To me, a, a, a bigger thing to go with that would be as the internet reaches more users in India, and India has a billion user base, like China now has, or it's getting to, then people, you know, when you tackle problems in India, you can, you can, you can think about big problems, right? And, uh, and so you can, you can be very ambitious in what you tackle. And, and the part of doing that is what leads to big global uh, companies. So I am absolutely confident uh, this will happen in India. It's just a matter of time. It's not, you know, so it's going to happen. One of, one of the things you do very well, and you must have done in your personal life at some point, was to think big, think scale. Is that, is that, was that part of you? Can that be learned? The ability to just think of something big, think scale? Or was the environment around you after you traveled to the US, did that nurture this ability to think big? And maybe that'll be part of the answer that, uh, that, that Rishikesh was asking. Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. Uh, some of it is, uh, you know, I do think Google played a big part in it. You know, I think at Google always, you know, we used to think about solving problems, you know, always what we would look for is, will it one day apply to a billion people, right? And so if you, if you did something, will it work for a billion people? And we wanted to work on problems which people used in their everyday life. And so we always ask those questions. So everything we did, you know, when we worked on even things, simple things like at the time Google Books, 
you know, the approach was, what if he could scan all the books in the world and bring them online? And so there was an inherent assumption of scale in everything uh, we taught, and so that really helped shape my thinking. Excellent. So guys think scale. Okay, we're going, we're going back. I think where's Sushma from, from the North Cap University? Sushma, you're around somewhere? Hi. Ah, there you are. Hi. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yeah. So we heard that uh, Google committed to provide the broadband connectivity on almost 500 railway stations in support for the Digital uh, India Initiative. So, sir, the question is how do you think this is going to benefit Google and how do you think India is going to get benefited from such an initiative? Um, we, we are very excited about the public Wi-Fi project. It's the largest public Wi-Fi uh, undertaking in the world, you know, because uh, the 400 railway stations which we are working on, uh, each day will get over 10 million passengers. And we are talking about real high-speed connectivity uh, through Wi-Fi, so you can watch your favorite Bollywood videos in high definition, um, yeah, and, and many more things. Uh, <laughs> You know, the reason we are doing it is, uh, you know, in India, you know, any time I felt, uh, you know, when you bring access to the internet, uh, you know, it, it literally changes people's lives. And doing it in public, public places like the railway stations will expose many people to the internet for the first time. And so that's why we are very interested in doing it. I think a lot of, lot of things in India is about driving awareness. And, uh, you know, if you are serious about getting the next for all the scale and potential of India, there are still one billion users who don't have connectivity. So how do you go, go towards making that happen? And uh, you know, it's a long journey, it's a process, so we want to figure out many different approaches to it. We think the railways, Wi-Fi would be one big step in that direction. Excellent. <laughs> remember, remember some of my own, some of our own train journeys, and gee, what would we have given to have had, uh, had Wi-Fi on a train journey wow, then? Yeah. I used to take the Coromandel Express from uh, Chennai to Karakpur, and uh, you know, uh, at that time I wasn't worried about Wi-Fi. I was worried about getting food on the way, but uh, uh, but Wi-Fi would have been awesome. So Karakpur is known for two things, really, wasn't it? Karakpur is known for the IIT, and Karakpur is known for the longest railway platform. You know, when you had to carry your luggage all the way and you got off on the wrong end, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it wasn't that much fun. <laughs> It'll be a big platform for, uh, to provide Wi-Fi, though. Uh, I, I, I hope we do it. You know, uh, I'm not sure whether it's, in, it's on the list of 400, but hopefully we do it there. Okay, here's a question from, uh, from a lady from Miranda House, Delhi University. She couldn't be here, so we're asking the question on her behalf. Uh, Shreya Varma, what will Google do to involve women in technology? There are very few women in the app ecosystem. I mean, it's a, it's a global problem. Uh, I think the problem is particularly pronounced in India. Uh, you know, we do see, you know, women account for uh, less than one-third of internet usage, and it's particularly uh, worse off in rural areas. You know, one of the things is, uh, you know, uh, we did, uh, we did a, an amazing pilot project in which it's called Internet Sati, where uh, we literally had women drive these bicycles, and these bicycles are equipped with, uh, you know, just with a set of smartphones in the back and, and a tablet. And so the women go from village to village, and we have done this in thousand villages. And we, you know, they teach other women, uh, you know, how to go online. What does it mean to go use a smartphone and connect it? You know, the the thing which you find striking is most women in rural areas don't think the internet applies to them. You know, they think it's something for their husbands, for their sons, and uh, you know, so there is a there is a big learning that's needed there. Uh, to me, every time, you know, it is one of. Uh, the most important things we can do as a country, I think, is to help get these women online. There's a lot of people working on it. Uh, we are, uh, you know, um, we are happy to play a small part in this. We, we just announced that we would expand the program, uh, which we are doing in partnership with Tata Trust. Uh, we would expand this to cover 300,000 villages in the next three years. That's half of the villages in India. And, uh, you know, we'll be working with the government to make it work more effectively as well. But helping get women online, uh, I think, is an incredibly important thing. And if we do it better, uh, I'm sure there'll be many more women developers uh, one day when I, when I come back. There's a point of view that India's next big leap will come when, uh, when more women enter, enter the kind of things you're, you're talking about as well. So hopefully, all you young women, get into get in apps. Get into apps and, and, and take the message around as well. What we are seeing, though, is in the 10th standard and 12th standard exam, and guys, you don't want to hear this. 
but the, but the girls are beating the boys hands down. It was true when I was there as well. <laughs> okay, Ruchika Salwan from the Department of Computer Science, University of Delhi. There you are. Yes. Greetings, sir. I'm honored to interact with you in person and welcome to Thank India, you. first of all. Uh, sir, my question for you is, how is your vision for Google different from that of Larry Page and Sergey Brin? You know, I've worked with them very closely for many, many years. I think you know, part of uh, why we have been able to do this together is we, we kind of share the same aspirations. We, of course, have a lot of differences and we debate approaches to how you solve problems. But at a high level, you know, all of us have felt that uh, you, know, you can use technology and computer science to solve problems at scale, big problems which will make a difference in uh, people's day-to-day -day lives. We've always been interested in doing that, so that's the common thread by which we have thought about problems, and uh, and uh, so I do. Uh, you know, I would I share a lot more in common than not. So, did you ever didn't didn't you ever sort of get up one morning and say, you know what, these two guys produced a world-changing company, and they want to give it to me? <laughs> Uh, you know, they're still very involved. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, they are, uh, they are equally ambitious and, uh, you know, they want to do a, a lot more with it, uh, you know, and, and uh, but, you know, uh, I think, you know, for me it was truly, uh, truly a privilege to get this opportunity and so I'm excited for it. Okay, we've got another from, uh, from, from social media. There's this two or three guys have sent in this question, so can we get it off the screen, please? Okay, Naveen, Naveen Subramaniam, Shravan Ravi, Vishal Goenka. There are many Google services and products that are not available in India. Why is that and what are the plans to make them available? You know all those names. Uh, some of Google's biggest services aren't available here, says Shravan as well. Vishal's asking that too. Um, you know, it's a good question. Uh, you know, we, we do work hard to bring our services to India. So, for example, I see the question has, Project Loon, and you know, it's, it's you know, it, we are working very hard to bring uh, a Project Loon experiment to India to start with, and it's part of what uh, you know I came here working on. So we are we are working very very hard to bring everything uh, we want to India, but increasingly we also see an opportunity to do things first in India, and then actually it'll work for global markets too. So for example, YouTube offline, uh, you know, uh, was we first did it in India last year. And now it's in 77 countries uh, worldwide. Uh, and uh, you know, so we see there as a good template uh, by which how we approach things in the future. So which is why we are investing a lot more in India. Uh, part of it is we are expanding our engineering offices in India significantly. We are going to be building a big new campus in Hyderabad. And uh, so I'm excited about what we can do here and take it globally to the rest of the world. So more and more products are going to be built in, built in India? Yeah, I mean, it's a goal. Uh, it's a goal that, you know, especially for markets, mobile, the way it's scaling up, we do think we can do things here which will apply globally elsewhere. Excellent. Everybody, get on, buy your tickets, go to Hyderabad. <laughs> okay, from Amity University, where's Jas Singh Bhaseen? Hey. Ah, there you are. Hi, Sundar. Hello. I, I have an interesting question for you. I had read, read somewhere that you have unusual gift that seemed a little more than a curiosity when you were a child, but has served you incredibly well in adulthood, which is insane numerical recall, and can remember every number you have ever dialed. Is it true? Uh, it's, <coughs> it's no longer true, but at the time when I was in India, uh, we were lucky because the phone numbers were only six digits, uh, so that helped, and, and Google didn't exist then. So, um, People all over my family and friends, if they wanted to uh, call a phone number, they would just ask me. And so I just got used to the habit of remembering every phone number I had called or I had heard about. Uh, but when I went to the US, the phone digits were, first of all, 10 digits, so made it much harder. But as soon as I got a smartphone which started storing phone numbers, you know, I stopped thinking about them. So I, I can't do it now, but I used to be able to do it uh, a long time ago. Jeez, you reach a stage when everybody's younger than you. When we were kids growing up in Hyderabad, the first telephones that came had two-digit numbers. <laughs> so you actually knew everybody who had a telephone, let alone <laughs> remembering the telephone number. 
Okay, we've got one on, uh, we've got a question on, on video coming up. I think there's Meghna from, from IIT Kharagpur. They all seem very excited about uh, asking you questions from IIT Kharagpur. So let's get it off the video screen. Hi, my name is Meghna and I'm from IIT Kharagpur. Uh, my question is, Google or Alphabet is no longer restricted to being only a search engine, but we seldom hear about any non-computer science undergraduates working at Google. Why is that and what is the recruitment procedure for these people? Thank you. Uh, you know, it's it's not. I mean, we we do hire a lot of people. Uh, you know, who are non-computer science undergrads. Uh, you know, if you look at the scale of Google, to do something, uh, you know, to do a product well, uh, building a building the product is only one aspect of it, right? Uh, you want to be able to build it. You want to scale it. Take it to market. Uh, how you take it to market? How do you market it? How do you sell it? In certain cases, uh, you know, um, the end-to-end -end work that takes to make a product happen. It's a very cross-functional thing. So we hire people from all kinds of backgrounds. There are language majors at Google, uh, people who have done history, people who, you know, who have done business, commerce, and engineering. So uh, you know, you know, I'm, I'm confident. Uh, in fact, a majority of people at Google probably don't have computer science as an undergrad uh, background overall. So, uh, so follow your dreams, and you can work wherever you want also tells your life is changing. I thought in that photograph in the background there was a badminton racket and what looked like a guitar. <laughs> Did you have that at IIT Kharagpur? Uh, I, yeah, I think so. You might have, excellent. Yeah. So how many of you are non-computer science graduates who want to work in Google? Now the number of non-computer science hands were less than the number of hands saying they want to work in Google. <laughs> okay. Now there's a there's almost a pattern now to all interviews in India where the host is required to ask rapid fire questions of the guest. <laughs> These are not my questions. The only condition is that the questions will be asked quickly and the answers are short. Okay. But your answers are always short. <laughs> so, okay, here we go, Sundar. Okay, rapid fire questions. When did you buy your first phone? Uh, smartphone? <laughs> Any phone. Uh, not, not the one in Chennai. Yeah, the rotary the phone. Uh, it was a Motorola StarTuck. Uh, this was probably 95, 96, yeah. And the first smartphone? Uh, you know, I, I thought it was a smartphone, but the first smartphone I bought was probably in 2006. Actually, here's one, another question. How many smartphones do you have? Because I think you'll find the average in this room is not one. Uh, I, you know, I test it. Probably in my house there are probably 20 to 30. I shouldn't admit it. <laughs> that is such disastrous news for kids who don't buy their own phones. And I do, okay. Do you think coding should be made compulsory for everyone? I don't think it should be made compulsory, but I think it should be strongly encouraged. Yeah, so. What was your first software project? Oh, just learn, you know, uh, trying to build a rudimentary version of like chess or, and games like that. That's what I did first. Why do you look at him and think it might have been chess? <laughs> For all the talk about Barcelona and cricket. <laughs> okay, this, I promise you, I have nothing to do with this question. How much did you score in your class 12? <laughs> Not enough to get into Sri Ram College of Commerce. <laughs> and of course, to get into IIT Kharagpur, you had to write an exam. Yeah, but it wasn't based on my class 12 grades, yeah. How important are class 12 grades anyway? Uh, no, it's a serious question because when we, were, when we were growing up, class 10 and class 12 grades were everything. Yeah. There were some people who were good enough to write entrance exams and get into IITs, right? Some of us weren't. Yeah. So we had to live with our 10th and 12th standard grades. There are too many teachers in the room for me to answer that question. <laughs> okay, last one. Where do you see Google in the next 30 years? Uh, you know, I think it's a, it's a long question. I just want to make sure the next 30 years uh, we are still able to work on problems which 
uh, really work for people on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, hopefully, at that point, serve all of humanity in a profound way. So that's where I want to be. And that is important to Google, isn't it? It is. Uh, you know, it is a core part of at least what drew me to Google. I think the chance that we could work on products uh, which would one day, uh, you know, reach everyone in the world. Uh, you know, I didn't have access to computing growing up, and uh, once I got access to it, I, you know, it changed my life. And so I've always been interested in this is why we work on affordable Android smartphones or Chromebooks and being able to reach everyone. I think it's a foundational part of what we do. It's two o'clock. We've got our last question coming up, and it's coming off our screen. Right, everyone, all eyes on the screen. Gagan Kaira. Why is the special edition, well, I'm going to just correct the spellings as I go. Why is the special edition Star Wars cardboard not available for Indians? This is one of those applause, that kind of applause, the jazz is going to grow as it goes around. Ah, we should figure out. Uh, these are these amazing, we just handed them out at Google uh, last week before I left, and uh, they're really amazing ones. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if we could give one to everyone in the room here? Does everyone include people on the stage as well? <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, I think, I think there's a way we are going to make it happen. So uh, we'll, we'll figure out a way to get it to one, everyone here today. You know. It's so typical of you, as I've got to know you in the last hour, to make a huge announcement in such an understated manner. So everyone's going to get one, guys. What do you think of that? There is one other thing I have to do because it's now the thing that all Indians do. But you don't get to take it, I do. This is a this is, and for someone who's as technology challenge as me, this is a big challenge. This is a 360 degree selfie. Okay. So I'll, I'll take a couple. I don't know if you can stand that far apart, but I'll, I'll aim it at you. It's okay if I don't get in, but it's 360 I will, I guess. Okay, there you are, and I'll come closer. Sit, 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 sit. <laughs> this, is, this is everyone's fanboy moment. <laughs> It's incredible, I saw some of these, and for someone as challenged as me, it like sort of blew my mind to do a 360 degree selfie, which means everybody is in it. So, there you are. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, all of you there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure, sir.